Hey guys, what's up? It's Mike here, and it's a beautiful day outside. I mean, the sun's shining. We're at a lake here. But there might be some noise because of the cars from behind. So we'll move to another bench pretty soon. The sun's shining quite bright, which is good because that means warmth for everyone because it is a chilly day. But uh, finally, we're allowed to go outside. So thank you to the skies and nature. So. Today's topic will be my first LSD experience. Now, this is quite interesting. This may be a controversial topic to some people, but I mean, if you looked up the video, you probably have some interest in it, depending on uh, what your background is. You know, you may have grown up believing different things, but uh, I, I don't judge. You know, it's all good. Hey, hopefully, you don't judge me as well. But, anyways, so. This was two years ago, uh, and I wanted to try LSD because I was curious, and I was just like, huh, you know, what can I order? Because I ordered it, I got it from the deep net. I got it from the, um, the dark web, deep web, you know, uh, dark net markets, whatever you want to call it. So at that point, Silk Road was shut down, but I do believe it was Agora that I used. And uh, anyways, so I got good acid. I got a lot because I was kind of stupid and two years ago like really I was a really stupid person like you know I like to view drugs as tools just like guns and cars and everything else you know you can use it or you can abuse it of course and um, you know it's it's just a inanimate object that provides something for you it, it gives you an experience but other than that it doesn't have a high state of consciousness so it can't really think or do anything so it's up to the user uh, in which way he or she will use it for good or for bad or just stupidly not even thinking about it and uh, so I was a very interesting kiddo two years ago I mean I still am but uh, at least I gained some knowledge so what happened was I decided to take it immediately because I was impatient. I was like so curious because before this I've only tried uh, marijuana, right? I've only smoked weed for like, it, it was quite a while, you know, I was a stoner, but I was not prepared for LSD, you can say that. Right, so um, I had to cut it there because there was quite a lot of people and usually I wouldn't care, but, uh, don't want to piss off any people today. Plus the sun was a little bit in my eyes and this is a tiny bit better. So, still chilly though. But anyways, so I've only tried marijuana before this and you know, oh, there goes a car. I like to listen to the music of the world. The fountain, the cars passing by, whatever birds may be around. Anyways, so I tried LSD and this was two years ago right before summer and this was actually my sophomore year of high school and I decided to take it a few hours before final exams which is perfect I mean so this this just keeps getting better right so I wasn't experienced with psychedelics I decided to you know fuck it let's go straight to acid and uh, I don't want to underdose because that was my biggest fear right underdosing and not feeling cool and getting a full experience. Except I should have done some research. At least I should have looked up Arrowhead LSD and looked at how long it takes and uh, how long it takes to kick in, how long the actual experience is, what the side effects are, and how you should just be prepared for bad trips and what happens in case of a bad trip. So. As you can tell, it didn't turn out too well because I said bad trip, um, and it wasn't just a bad trip. There's a difference between bad trips and bad, bad trips, like life-changing shit. So this was a life-changing event, so to speak, because I took it at 2 in the morning, or 1 in the morning, something around there, and it took like an hour to kick in, and I had two tabs, and each tab was 200 micrograms. So in total, I took 400 micrograms. And so I took one first, and I waited an hour, and nothing happened. I was just like, you know, I was impatient, right? I didn't know that it took quite a while to kick in. So I take the second tab, 
and five minutes pass by and I see some, you know, I, I feel something. I see some effects. I go to the bathroom and I get stuck in the bathroom. I, it hit me, it hits me hard in the bathroom and I look in the mirror and I see everything swirling around and it sort of felt like I was becoming really small and the room was becoming giant. Like it was suddenly like I was five feet, four feet, three feet, and then the room just kept getting bigger and bigger. And then it kept going back and forth because the room would go big and then it would shrink and then the room would go big and then it would shrink. And eventually, you know, after like an hour in the bathroom, okay, it wasn't an hour, it was probably like 15 minutes, but still, it felt like forever. Um, I was able to make it out of the bathroom, but everything was melting. Everything was just swirls everywhere, tracers, and I did not understand what the fuck was going on. I lost all sense of reality, and all I can remember was really just texting a few people. I was able to text, it was kind of fucky texts, but I was able to text a few things, and then I thought about calling 911 because I was freaking out. I was just like, oh my god, you know, this is crazy, this is way too intense. And at this point, I was still worried. I was just like, how am I going to get to school? How am I going to dress myself? Because I was still worried, you know, for the final exams. I was just like, yeah, I can take the final exams, you know, tripping balls. And so, obviously, this was abuse. So, things weren't going too well. And uh, there was kind of like this blackout period where I had an out-of-body experience. And at this point, what happened next was basically from the recollection of my parents where they woke up in the early morning hours and I was running around screaming naked <laughs> I took all my clothes off and I thought people were trying to kill me I thought the SWAT team was outside and I thought I was Tony Montana from Scarface and uh, it was kinda really interesting and my girlfriend at the time I thought she and uh, I had kids and I had to protect the kids and which they didn't exist. I was hallucinating this all. And this was while I was running around naked. I I had this moment where I was afraid of my dog, so I tried to strangle it. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't able to strangle him, which was very fortunate. Um, but it took a while for him to recover from that, like the mental psychological pain. <laughs> he didn't like me, and I understand. I couldn't control it though. But anyways, what I can remember is probably like seven in the morning I'm in the hospital and they were taking me well I, I can remember a little bit before that I was in the uh, ambulance right and I just remember getting strapped down I was screaming and I took cocaine <laughs> I took cocaine I'm Tony Montana I'm Scarface uh, the ambulance people saw my giant pupils they're like fuck no you didn't because uh, this guy is tripping hard because you know cocaine would dilate your pupils to a tiny little pea pod, while my eyes were owl eyes. Woohoo! Woohoo! And uh, at this point, what else happened? So, you know, the fire department shows up, an ambulance shows up, two cop cars showed up because it was drug related, and it was also in a good neighborhood, you know, um, so usually, you know, while if you live in a fancy neighborhood, things don't happen like this, really quite so often so when they do it's the whole brigade the disco party comes into town and um, so what next I remember was I was in the hospital and I thought the doctors were trying to kill me because it was just like everything was too nice they were just like it's gonna be okay everything's gonna be all right I was just like no it's not these people are trying to kill me because like the IV and stuff so I think I tried fighting five of them at once I ended up getting strapped to the uh, what are, what should I call it? The chair, the gurney, whatever it is. And I had a little guard. I don't know if he was a cop or if he was the hospital guard or something, but he was in my room. And my parents were there. They're just like, oh, you know, everything's gonna be okay, whatever. Oh, I was afraid. I looked at my arms. They were completely bruised up, giant bruises everywhere. Probably from me falling on the ground and rolling around naked and screaming and turning into a demon and all this shit. And, uh, well, so at this point, what else happened? Oh, I was able to see all my veins. They, I, I saw purple and green quite clearly. I was staring at my hands. I was just like, holy shit, this is cool. At that, that, that point, I was sort of calming down because the acid was 
I wasn't peaking anymore, and uh, it was coming down, and plus the IV and uh, whatever else they they gave me, and uh, it was it was crazy. But then I fell asleep. I had another sort of out of body experience where I thought I was in a different room and I was a different dimension, different room of the hospital, like the second floor, and I was able to like travel and <laughs> okay, that part was kind of cool. I, I I miss it a little bit. Um, at that point, I didn't care, like, there was no anxiety, no fear, it was just kind of like, holy shit, who am I? I lost everything, you know, I, I lost, like, my ego and shit, didn't know who I was, was just chilling in a room, didn't know what was going on, except at some point, the anxiety came back, and it was just like, holy shit, am I gonna stay like this forever, who am I, the second clone of myself, or whatchamacallit, and, uh, eventually I settled down, and realized that I'm myself, I'm not a clone, I'm not, I didn't teleport anywhere, it's just they must have moved me, they must have moved my rooms from like the emergency unit to like the normal care or whatever the fuck it is, and the whole hospital just looked very trippy because it was kind of like futuristic, it looked new, it's it's a very, uh, I mean it's an expensive hospital and uh, it just looked really cool, all the technology, all the monitors and stuff, they, they were tripping me out a little bit. And eventually, I was out of the hospital a couple hours later. Um, quite a hefty bill to pay. My parents were very pissed off. I got grounded, and uh, all my drugs were thrown away. And I kind of got off scot-free, because the cops knew I took drugs, and they saw a lot more acid. But they just told my mom to throw it away, which, thank you, because if it wasn't thrown away, that would have been like a felony X or something. I believe because LSD is classified as substance, a Schedule One, same with heroin, which is very interesting. But hey, marijuana is Schedule One nationally too, which is oh boy, that's another topic for another video. And uh, I have plenty more LSD experiences to talk about. It's just this was the worst trip probably, and it was my first trip, 400 micrograms, and let's just say, oh boy. I had to cut it again because my battery was running a little iffy. I had to check on that. But anyways, holy crap, it is a beautiful day. Honestly, absolutely beautiful. So, I had some interesting after effects, afterglow. And it was just like this weird period um, where I was trying to recollect what happened because my memory was hazy. And so I learned that I was running around naked like a maniac, but before that I called my girlfriend at 3 in the morning, which for her was 4 in the morning, because she lived in a different state at the time, and uh, I was screaming like a monster, supposedly. I was just like, Aah! you know, <laughs> going full retard, and she did not appreciate that, so she was not into drugs as well, and she didn't know I used. I mean, she knew about marijuana, um, but she didn't know about LSD and... I decided not to tell her because, well, because I was stupid. I was stupid. And I decided not to do any research on it. I was just like, ah, let's pop a few tabs, fuck it, who cares, right? And so things did not go too well. I had to spend the rest of the summer trying to recover from that because I screwed up a lot of things uh, with just that one incident. I had to go in to finals the next day, uh, which I... You know, I wasn't supposed to come in that day, but I had to make up my finals. Let's just say I failed those finals because things did not go too well, um, because my mind was distracted. And uh, that whole semester was just, it was full of lots of um, shitty things that happened, and it was kind of fucked up. But anyways, so I know that this video is probably giving it a bad reputation, for LSD, but we're just discussing the bad trips, and I hope that the people that are watching this video understand that, you know, everyone can be stupid with substances, and hear some voices. No, no, it's a lady talking. Hallucinations. Not just kidding. Maybe. Anyways, um, so it's just, you know, now I understand you have to be more responsible with substances, especially psychedelics, which they can seriously scar you mentally in a bad, bad trip that ends up with a $40,000 hospital bill or more. I don't know exactly how much it was because insurance didn't cover it because it was technically like I did it to myself, right? It was drugs and it was illegal, all that stuff, right? So insurance didn't cover it 
and it, it, there was just a lot, a whole slew of incidents that happened after that one thing, after that one event that just kind of changed my life. And uh, also mentally, you know, I lost a lot of my childhood memories and I sort of regained them after a year, but it took a long time. I had short term memory loss. I also, uh, I had flashbacks a little bit, like it, it's not, I wasn't, ex I thought flashbacks would be like, holy shit, I'm tripping again, but no, it's just like, you have these weird moments where you space out and you may get some paranoia and all this stuff. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, the next month after that, I had extremely vivid, vivid dreams of uh, whatever I did that day. And uh, those were kind of cool because at that point there was no anxiety. It was just a dream and I was like, wow, this is, this is epic, you know? But after that, I was clean for a few months and fully from anything, nothing, had nothing, zero, you know, life was, life was all right. Well, it actually wasn't, there's a lot more. There, there were, <laughs> I was trying to make it all right. Shit was going on. But anyways, that's for another time because there's a lot more events I'd like to talk about. However, I don't want this video too long. So there was my first LSD incident and it was a bad trip. Do I regret it? No. Why? Because it was a learning experience. And we can't take back the past, but we can look forward into the future, and we can use the, what experience we have to make future experiences better. And uh, hopefully, we learn from our mistakes. And if we don't, we repeat them again, and hopefully after that time we learn. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope that anyone who wants to try psychedelics is safe and researches what substances they're using and isn't a stupid 16 year old kid like I was because uh, it definitely kind of screws your day up and it might screw up some more things. So anyways, I wish you guys all the best. Namaste. Stay tuned for more videos. So we got the squirrelies. Ah. Ah. What you doing? <laughs> oh, look, 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 another one. That one's just munching away. They're everywhere today.